I'm starting to get really, really tempted to put Mac OS Monterey on my main machine. For those who don't know, I've only got one Mac right now. I sold off my Mac mini earlier this year and storage space is very, very limited on my iMac Pro right now. So I'm not really interested in partitioning with the dev beta because way back when I got the dev beta for Mojave, it basically prevented me from exporting videos. So I don't want to put the beta on my iMac Pro, but some of these great features we're going to talk about today is making me want to try it. It, and I know I shouldn't, but either way, I can't wait to try this. Let's begin. So first of all, low power mode. Finally, why can't we get that on iPads? Whatever, never mind. Low power mode's been a great feature for the iPhone for many, many years, and now it's being brought to the Mac, and I can't wait to try it out on the iMac Pro because low power, right? You know, that, that should lower my electric bill, shouldn't it? No, but on a more serious note for MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros and stuff, they already have insanely good battery life with the M1 chip. And now if we're able to engage a low power mode, that should make that last even longer than before. And on top of that, like low power mode kind of does some things on your iPhone with cellular and it has it check for towers less frequently. When can we get cellular Max, Apple, by the way? That would be nice. That's more of a joke application. The more interesting one for me is universal control because as you guys know i've given up on the ipad becoming more than anything it is today so if i am keeping my older ipad pro around the fact that i'll be able to use the same keyboard and mouse i control my imac with to just seamlessly move over and start controlling my ipad all of a sudden i know why apple didn't release this earlier it's because if this was a feature i probably would not have bought the magic keyboard case for 350 dollars. it's super dang expensive and the majority of my ipad's life it's just sitting on my desk next Next to my Mac, which is, I believe, how Apple sees the iPad forever being just a Mac accessory. But if I knew that I was going to be able to control this iPad just from the same keyboard and mouse, I could have a way cleaner desk set up. I still like being able to charge my iPad from either side, though. So if they just made a smart folio case that did not have a keyboard or trackpad or anything, but it did bring you back a USB C port on the left side of the iPad, I would probably go for that just so I could charge it from the left or the right. And on top of that, not have to have two different keyboards and a mouse and a trackpad to switch between because this is a feature that I think got way too easily overshadowed. This is one of the beauties of Apple's ecosystem, right? We have this great photo editing and great app optimization on iPad and now it's all optimized to work really well with the keyboard and the mouse and now finally we can control it from the same keyboard and mouse we're controlling our Macs with. This type of symmetry is just so rare outside of the Apple ecosystem. There's not going to be a bunch of really good Android tablets out there that you can control seamlessly between your Windows PC and I'm sure there might be some third-party application you have to download and install but it's definitely not going to do that natively this is something that you don't have to download and install you literally just bring your iPad close to the Mac and the really interesting thing that some of Apple's chairman were talking about is how you don't even have to necessarily arrange the iPad to be close by to the Mac it basically just instantly realizes that if you're moving your mouse to the left left side of your Mac OS display, that should probably mean it comes out the right side of the iPad OS display and vice versa. Move your mouse to the right side of the Mac, it assumes it should come off to the left side of iPad OS. So that type of extreme attention to detail, I really appreciate and I can't wait to start using. The thing is though, I think I would probably have to install iPad OS 15, which I'm not a fan of, on my main iPad here, which I, I don't want to mess around with because I, I am going to miss this today view and having all these apps on the home screen and having it not look completely atrocious in portrait mode. But as you can see, I did put the macOS Monterey wallpaper on here. You know, I'm not getting macOS on the iPad, but most of our operating system is just the wallpaper, right? That's essentially all that matters. Another super underrated feature is they did talk about how Macs are now going to become AirPlay beacons. So whether you want to control music or play music directly off your Mac and control it from your phone, or you want to do screen mirroring. So you're looking at something on your iPad, looking at something on your iPhone, and now you want to share that screen wirelessly to your bigger screen Mac with black bezels. Now you can do that, but one of the underrated use cases of this is that Macs can also use other Macs via AirPlay. So this isn't exactly target display mode. For those who don't know, Macs used to have this feature that allowed you to turn iMacs into external monitors, and then they took that away a few years back. But with AirPlay, you can even use a wire, okay? It's not going to be a full Thunderbolt connection, but you can use AirPlay via a USB cable, and that will ensure very little 
little latency and the video image is still probably going to be compressed a bit so don't expect the airplay from your macbook to a imac display if you want to just have one computer controlling both screens it'll still probably be compressed a little bit but the fact that that's now an option and you can basically just enter a macbook into the situation and say hey i want this imac to now become an external monitor for my macbook that's amazing because we should have been able to do that a long time ago and i don't know why apple doesn't want that to happen i know there's some complicated driver displays that prevent things like the more recent generation iMacs or even my iMac Pro from becoming an external monitor for your PC, for your MacBook. It's not just as simple as plugging in a Thunderbolt cable and say, okay, now take an image from this. It's very complicated, but the iMacs themselves need their own custom drivers. It's more than just a Thunderbolt port. But now via AirPlay, we should be able to get something somewhat close. I'm not exactly sure what the resolution will be, but if it's anything over or close to 1440p, I think it could be very usable and appreciated by tons of Mac users out there, especially if you have like a somewhat older iMac, but now you're using a MacBook Pro. Now you can turn that iMac into an external monitor, potentially wirelessly, and keep on using your faster, more recent generation MacBook. So that's just freaking wonderful. Another super underrated feature that went unnoticed during the event that I had to bring some credit to as someone who has reviewed and sold and reset Macs tons and tons of times in the past, Monterey finally lets you erase and factory reset a Mac without having to reinstall the entire operating system. This made no sense to me, and I saw a lot of people complaining about this as well, because iPads and iPhones, you just go into settings and press a button that says erase all content and settings that wipes the SSD of all of your private information, and it resets all of your configurations to the point that if you shut the computer off and start it up again, it's like it's a brand new Mac. It'll give you the hello and everything, and it'll act like it's just on launch day all over again, which is something you have to do whenever you sell your iMac or MacBook or something to someone, which I've done numerous times, but the process on macOS for years has been so dang complicated. You essentially have to reboot the computer and go into recovery mode and wipe the SSD a clean slate. Then you have to download a whole fresh new copy of the operating system, which has to install. It's a process that usually took me between 45 minutes to over an hour, depending on how fast the internet was acting that day or when I factory reset my Mac mini because it was a 128 gig SSD. It was actually becoming very, very complicated to get everything off of that because if I wanted to install a fresh copy of the OS, Mac OS Big Sur could barely fit on that 128 gig SSD and it was acting like there wasn't enough space. So in that particular situation, if there was just a feature that let me erase the Mac and reset all settings without having to completely wipe the operating system and install it all over again, that would have been a million percent easier. So if you're the type of person to buy and sell Macs or return Macs very regularly, this feature is a godsend. They didn't talk about it during the event because I'm sure Apple is thinking like resetting a Mac no you would you would never do something crazy like that the Mac is perfect you're gonna set it up once and leave it like that forever but either way that is a huge deal for me and it's gonna make me want to have Mac OS Monterey on every Mac I ever use moving forward and it's gonna be one of those very annoying things if I'm using a Mac or gonna work on uh, selling it or trading it with someone else and if it doesn't have Mac OS Monterey on it I'm gonna be like Ugh, okay this is gonna be a big headache but moving forward knowing it's gonna get a lot easier is a big refreshing point for me. Those are probably my favorite things of macOS Monterey. I'm curious if you guys think it's worth putting on my main machine. Keep in mind in the past it prevented me from doing my job so I'm potentially risking a lot by putting it on my main rig but what's your guys' favorite feature from macOS Monterey that you feel like is going unappreciated? A few tidbits I saw was letting the mouse be a different color for some psychopath out there that wants a purple mouse or having the Memoji face at login kind of move around and talk because you know that's that's what we needed out of our Macs. Feel free to let me know. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.